All right. This is uh, Shortcuts Part 2. All right, so we already spent some time uh, going over these two uh, types of functions. Uh, don't worry. These guys are not left out. These are just standard forms of these guys. Uh, it's kind of crazy, huh? Like this one is the same as this one, but they don't really look the same. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at the one third and the negative three. That's the only difference uh, between these uh, functions are the a's. Okay, so let's look at the one third and a negative three. And we're also going to be looking at the mother function and how the mother function over here compares to these guys. Oh, the mother function. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, it was this fraction right here. It scared me. Um, so we're going to look at this one right here with the one third and what that does to the function. Now, just looking at the mother function and then looking at this one, it, this one's clearly fatter. All right. So the, the one third makes this function wider. In fact, what it's doing is it's taking all the y values and lowering them down one third. But anyways, uh, let's talk about the major parts of this, this uh, quadratic function. First, we have our vertex, which is two one. That's the same as the other ones. Our axis of symmetry, which is x equals two right down the middle of the parabola. And then we have a minimum, a minimum y value uh, at one. Okay, so when we graph these guys, when we graph quadratic functions, the first thing you need is your vertex. This is the vertex for the mother function, zero, zero, right there at the center. This is the vertex for the P function, okay? The next thing you do is you wanna pick, um, this is just normally, you wanna pick one other point, but normally what we've been doing is we pick uh, a number that's above or below the axis of symmetry number. So in this case, it's zero, and you would pick negative one or one. Uh, this one, you would pick one or three, okay? Uh, <clears throat> but, this, for, but since there's an axis of symmetry, we only need to stay on one side because whatever we find on this one, we can just copy that over to the other side. Uh, over here, uh, what we would do is we would get one after we plug in one to the x squared. Uh, and then you'll notice that you go right to the one, <laughs> right to the one. You go right one and then up one uh, to get that point. Over here, oh my goodness, look what happens. We plug in three and look, we get this nasty answer. We get a one and one third, ew, that's disgusting. Okay, and then we get, I mean, you would have to put that right about here, right above the one, that would be one and one third. That, that really doesn't work. So if you don't wanna pick that point, there is another option. Um, Whenever you have a fraction like this, look at the denominator. This denominator is a three. If you can make the inside of the squared be a three, I will guarantee it will always simplify nicely. Okay, so we want the inside to equal three. So what can I plug into this X that would make the inside equal to a three? And the answer is five. If I put five in there, I will get a three. And so after I plug five in, check out what I got. I got a nice pretty point up here at four. That's interesting, but check this out. Let's try to find a pattern here. We had to go right three, then up three. This pattern, right three, then up three, works whenever you have a one over three. Because we have a one and a three on the bottom, I mean, if it was four, it would be right four, up four. But because there's a three, it's right three, up three, okay? Um, so it's kind of like this one, but it's not because it has the one third. Uh, all right. So the next thing you do is you would just copy this point over to the other side and then you'd be able to graph it. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to copy this point to the other side like that. And then we can graph it. Uh, now let's say you didn't want to pick the five. You want to do the Y intercept. So let's cross out the five, four and put in our zero for the X. That will give us the y-intercept. Oh, man, y-intercepts are so simple to find. I love finding y-intercepts. Why are they so simple to find? Because you just plug it in zero. It's crazy, I know. Now, this one, pretty things are not going to happen because, um, I don't know, it's just you have to like subtract the two, then square it, multiply it by one third, and then add the one. Over here, it's a lot simpler. Uh, this one goes away to zero. This one goes all the way to zero. Ew, that would be our answer. What? Zero plus seven over three. So we would get seven over three. Yuck, disgusting. It's hard to graph seven over three. So let's make them into a mixed number, which is two and one third, which is still not pretty. I don't like graphing fractions. 
uh, because what you're going to do is you're going to go up to the two and just go up a little bit more uh, so you can get to two uh, and one third. You would copy the point to the other side and then you can graph it. Not not very pretty. I think I actually like the five better. If I can go back in time, I wouldn't do the zero. But that's how you find the y-intercept for that guy. All right, here's our last one. And don't worry, this is going to be quick. Now the a is negative three. So let's find our three characteristics, our three important characteristics. We have our vertex at 2, 1. Axis of symmetry, same spot. X equals 2. Make sure you always have the x equals but for this one, it's not a minimum value. It's a max value. You guessed it because this parabola is going downwards, which means the y value of the vertex is not a minimum. It's a maximum. All right. So we put our vertex point first into our table. Then we choose a point uh, number above or below uh, the the whatchamacallit, the axis of symmetry. In this case, I'm going to choose 3 and 1. Okay, on uh, our mother function over here, um, we would get a point right there. And then um, notice that it goes right 1, up 1. Uh, on this one right here, when we plug 3 into this guy, we get negative 2. And so we get a point down here. Um, and then we see, oh, look, it goes right one, but this time down three. Kind of like when that was a positive three, we went right one, up three, but now we're going down three. Why? Because that's a negative, Stu's. It's a negative. Next thing you would do is you would copy the point to the other side because of the axis of symmetry and then graph it. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Graph it. Now, what if you didn't want to do that extra point right there? What if you want to do the y-intercept instead? Well, no problem. You just plug in zeros. Check out the standard form. Look at that. You know that you're going to get negative 11 because that's zero, that's zero, minus 11. So you get negative 11. Uh, now, that, there's kind of a problem here. It's almost off the graph. Uh, but I can still graph that point right there, do the other one. And then with the vertex, I can graph my point. Okay? So don't forget, guys. Uh, whenever you guys are um, graphing a quadratic function, you need the vertex and one other point.